Does the Mormon church shun people who leave? No, no, of course we don't. We don't use that word and we don't know that practice. I think the most damning statement uh, came from one of the presidents of the church, the third president of the church, John Taylor. Basically, he said that the reason that blacks had been allowed to come through the flood, the flood of Noah, was so that Satan would have representation upon the earth. That black folks were here to represent Satan and to have a balance against white folks who were here to represent Jesus Christ, the Savior. Um, how do you damn a people more than to say that their existence upon the earth is to, to represent Satan? Listen, I have to ask you something that I know that you have heard about, and if I don't ask it, people will wonder why I didn't. And that is, in the strength of your religion, the whole business about blacks not being allowed to be priests in the Mormon religion. Mm -hmm. Tell me how you, how you feel about it and what the explanation for that is, would you, Donnie? You bet. Well, I'm not an authority on the subject. But uh, I will mention that uh, we are not prejudiced people. We offer more, I think, than any other religion to the black person. And uh, if you really want a good explanation and someone who has an authority about it, you should really talk to the general authorities of our church. Mm -hmm. From 1830 to 1978, mm -hmm. blacks could not become priests in the, in the Mormon church, right? That's correct. Why? Because the leaders of the church at that time interpreted that doctrine that way. They, they are not allowed to hold the priesthood in this right, right now, and I don't know why, but that's the way the Lord wants it. Church policy had it that blacks uh, had the mark of Cain. Brigham Young said, Cain slew his brother, and the Lord put a mark upon him, which is the flat nose and black skin. It's behind us. Look, that's behind us. Don't worry about those little flicks of history. The question of extending the blessings of the priesthood to those then under restriction had been on the minds of many of the brethren over a period of years. It had repeatedly been brought up by presidents of the church. It had become a matter of particular concern to President Kimball. Over a considerable period of time, he had prayed concerning this serious and difficult question. He had spent many hours in that upper room in the temple by himself in prayer and meditation. On this question, he raised the question before his brethren, his counselors and the apostles. Following this discussion, we joined in prayer in the most sacred of circumstances. President Kimball himself was voice in that prayer. I do not recall the exact words which he spoke, but I do recall my own feelings and the nature of the expressions of my brethren. There was a hallowed and sanctified atmosphere in the room. For me, it felt as if a conduit opened between the heavenly throne and the kneeling, pleading prophet of God who was joined by his brethren. The Spirit of God was there, and by the power of the Holy Ghost there came to that prophet an assurance that the thing for which he prayed was right, that the time had come, and that now the wondrous blessings of the priesthood should be extended to worthy men everywhere, regardless of lineage. I can say that the, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is more committed than any institution, any religious institution I know of, to the dignity and standing and worth and merit 
and glory of a woman uh, in any way that I know to say it to you. I would put the position of a woman in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints up against the dignity and worth and merit and wonder of a woman anywhere on this planet. And we just need to do better. We just need to do better to be able to convey that. We need to be able to, 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 to make sure that everybody understands that, including the women in our church, which I don't think we've done well enough yet. The Testimony Glove will help every child learn their testimony. The beauty of the glove is it is so simple, it's so direct. I've seen children in Africa within a few minutes be able to bear their testimony. I've seen the women in Africa who didn't know how to read use this as a tool to teach their children what a testimony was. You can use the spirit and you can teach your children very simple truths that will last for a lifetime. This glove has great power to change lives. It teaches the five course principles of what the Church of Jesus Christ believes. Long after the glove is gone, the children will remember the five eternal concepts. This book prepares children for baptism and when they're eight years old, they'll be interviewed by a bishop asking them the five things on this glove. The Testimony Glove helps children understand these principles and cements them in their minds for life.